Hey folks, this is Kyle Keogh and I'm doing another one of these videos in this video, video series about uh, programming and in this video what I'm going to talk about is how we determine our programming when we are starting a new training cycle and I think that it's really important to always think about your programming relationally and I think that that's something that a lot of people miss and a lot of people miss this because what you have uh, today in powerlifting as uh, an online community that shares ideas and shares training programs is you have a bunch of different independent programs using different methodologies, different training philosophies that uh, people move from, from one to the other and they do so in a way that um, uh, that doesn't involve thinking about the current program in relation to the previous program and that's because uh, most of us don't really have a good handle on how to program for ourselves and so we rely instead upon the training programs of other people but when I say you need to think about your programming relationally when you're choosing a new program training program uh, here's specifically what I mean. Uh, as you would you know in the last video that I did, the way in which we get stronger is we produce a training stimulus, a new training stimulus. And the way in which we do that is we manipulate the variables associated with training. I mean, it, very simply, that's, that's how it happens. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the manipulations that we, that we, that we use in our new training program are going to be done in relation to whatever we were doing previously in training, okay? And so if you're used to a certain volume, a certain frequency, a certain intensity level, and so on and so forth, if that's what you're used to, if that's sort of the, the range in which you've, you've been training for a long time, in order for you to continue to make progress, you need to do something different from that. Now, if you do something different from that, one of three things can happen. Either you can, you can make progress, you can stay the same, or you can go backwards. It's only going to be one of those three things. Um, there are no other options. But uh, when, when we think about our programming relationally, what we're doing is we're thinking about our training program and what we're currently doing in relation to what we've previously done. And what you've previously done is going to, it's going to determine what you can do moving forward. So let's say hypothetically I was running a training program that was a low frequency, low volume, but very high intensity and used uh, you know, a lot of different general specific movements and rotated a lot of those movements. And that's what I trained for three months. And I get to a certain point where I'm unhappy with that and I'm looking for a new training program. It doesn't make sense to do something that is low frequency, low volume, high intensity, uh, with maybe a slight modification in the movements that are being used. That's not enough of a change in relation to what you've done before in order to produce a training stimulus. You're just, you're not making the correct choice given your training history if you previously weren't making progress. Um, when we make a new selection for a training program, we want something that is different from what we've done before. But we don't want something that is dramatically different from what we've done before. So it wouldn't make sense under that scenario for somebody to go from low volume to low frequency, low volume and low frequency, to something that is extremely high volume and uh, training seven days a week, doing the movements for five days a week. That wouldn't make any sense either, okay? When we're producing a new training stimulus and when we're choosing a new program or choosing where a program goes, we are taking a calculated risk, okay? And what I mean by that is when you've been doing a certain thing and you haven't been making progress and you want to do something different, you need to move away from what you were doing before. So you need a new training stimulus, so you need to do something different from what you were doing before in order to continue to make progress or in order to start making progress again. But the further you move away from that thing that you were doing before, the more risk that's associated with the decision that you're making to change your programming. So if you make a very small adjustment, you will probably see either a very small accompanying increase or decrease in your level of performance 
as compared to what you were doing before. If you make a very big departure from what you were doing, and so if you go from low volume, low frequency, to high volume, high frequency, you might see a tremendous increase in your performance, or you might see a tremendous decrease in your performance. And the only way to find out is to actually do it. But when we are making decisions about what new training program we're going to run, um, that decision always has to be made in relation to what we were doing before. So very simply, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to jot down everything that we've done in terms of number of barless per week, in terms of training number of sessions per week, in terms of the average intensity, in terms of for all those bar lifts, what intensity range they all fell under, what the average exertion level was for each set and for all the sets. We want to put down as much information as possible over a span of two or three or four months or however far back you can go, and then do something that is using the same criteria, so using the same tools for measurement, all these variables, something that is different, but not dramatically different, okay? Now, if you're looking for an exact idea of what constitutes difference, I would say that, for acceptable difference, I would say that amongst the variables that you have, um, generally speaking, with uh, the lifters that I program for, when I am introducing them to, uh, say, a new approach to training, I, uh, I won't increase the I won't increase the volume by more than say 50%. I won't increase the in, uh, I won't increase the intensity by much at all. I won't increase the frequency by more than say 100%. So that they're used to training their squat once a week, I won't uh, up that to more than twice a week. That would be the very most that I would increase it by. And then we make uh, incremental adjustments over time. So rather than for one training cycle go from squatting once a week to going Fourth a week, four times a week and exhausting that new training stimulus, go squatting once a week to twice a week to three times a week to four times a week. And over time, you're going to enjoy a new training stimulus that's being supplied by higher and higher and higher frequency squat training. So you really want to make, uh, put yourself in a position where you can really milk the, uh, the changes in your training. You don't want to make dramatic changes. And if you also limit the extent to which you make your changes in your training, if you make moderate changes over time, what you accomplish in that scenario is you make the results measurable. And that's really important, and that's something that I'll talk about in the next video that I do. Anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, look out for the next one.